respond to this. Thanks very much, Ayanda. Thank you for having me this morning. Yeah, you, you, you had to hit the nail on the head. I think one of the kind of main reasons why we're seeing this very steep, this very worrying uh, increase in our second wave is really human behavior. Uh, we really need to kind of craft a message that's going to get through to people to kind of, because we really rely at this stage on human behavior to really control the epidemic. That's really what the only weapon that we got at the moment. And I do know it's it's been a long time. We're really closing on, what, 10, 11, maybe a year uh, that we're going to uh, have to kind of really beat on the same drum, give the same message out. Uh, but unfortunately, the virus is with us. The epidemic is increasing. Uh, and people do need to understand that this is the only way that we can stop it spreading. Right. A part of the concerns is that uh, we've had other experts saying that this peak or spike is coming way earlier than had been anticipated. Uh, again, I, I wonder what that means for what ought to be our response for that, especially considering that not much is being said about the previous interventions we had during the first wave uh, in the form of things like field hospitals, for instance. Yeah, no, this wave certainly has come a lot earlier than what yeah. we predicted. We all thought it's going to come probably in January, maybe some even in February. So it has taken us by surprise. But you're right, you know, we do need to look at ancillary medical facilities other than the hospital, because the hospitals are really filling up, particularly all the way on the seaboard from KZN all the way to, uh, to Cape Town. Uh, hospitals are at capacity. Uh, and what we put into place in the first wave, as you mentioned, the field hospitals and uh, um, beds outside the conventional hospitals uh, do need to be kind of redeployed at, uh, now to kind of deal with the second wave. The second wave may even overtake what we had in the first wave. Yeah, and that's not least of which because there is a second complexity, so to speak, with this second wave. And that comes in the form of this variant, uh, variant a bigger pardon, that we're hearing of. The UK is among a few countries that have now responded to this by essentially isolating the country. How much do we know now, as a matter of fact, about this variant and, you know, the ways through which it might affect everyone across the spectrum? Because we're seeing even younger people now developing a severe case of the illness. Yeah, this variant is a bit of a concern. Uh, it's not too surprising. These viruses do mutate, and they mutate regularly. Particularly, this is a, it's what we call an RNA virus. Uh, we divide them into RNA and DNA virus, and the RNA virus do mutate. So this has certainly contributed to the steep increase. Um, and what we do know about this variant, what we do know definitely, is that it is more transmissible. And it's more transmissible because that particular mutation facilitates the virus's ability to infect cells, to infect our respiratory cells. So that has translated uh, in terms of its natural ability to increase its transmissibility. Uh, what we don't know at this stage uh, is, it, is, it, is it really more serious? Is it going to cause more serious illness? That we don't know at this stage. That's less to be determined. And also what we don't know is will the vaccine protect against it? It probably will. All the indications are that the vaccine is equally effective uh, and this variant as with the other, uh, as its, its predecessor um, viruses. Right. But certainly the transmissibility is a concern and mm. we need to be cognizant of it. Mm. What's also interesting is that it, it appears that this is a variant unique to South Africa. Is there anything within our conditions that might have been conducive to the development of some kind of mutation or are we just the unlucky population in the whole world? <laughs> Yeah, look, all these variants are unique to where they arise from because these are random mutations. They occur when the virus is circulating in the population. The virus mutates, and it's a random affair. Uh, we were a little bit unlucky because, uh, and I think it's just pure bad luck. It's nothing to do. It's nothing to do really with anything uh, intrinsic in our population or in any other country which is also has similar variants. It's just a random effect uh, of the virus mutating. Um, our particular variant, it's similar to the one in the UK. They were the first really to describe these, these variants, the so-called 501, it's given the name, 501 variant. We've got the 501 variant with a few more mutations. And that, that's just a, a chance event, yeah. an unpredictable chance event. If it, it appears to be happening so randomly and sporadically, is there a prospect yeah. of other mutations and other variants in the coming months? I mean, is that something that scientists would have to consider? Yeah, absolutely. That's a very good question because these viruses do mutate. Fortunately, the kind of natural history with most viruses is that they evolve from mutations to become more transmissible 
And generally, with most viruses, they tend to become less virulent. They call less serious disease. Now, it's not to say that this vi this variant will or won't. That's we really slow to find out. But that's a general trend. Viruses do tend to adapt to the population that they are host to. And it's obviously to their evolutionary advantage to do so. So, yes, there will be more mutations, but hopefully it won't translate into either causing more serious disease or escaping from the from the, the vaccine. I think that's very unlikely. It's extremely unlikely, but obviously that's a possibility. Sure, and we'll be watching as that all takes place. Let me thank you for your time and your insights. Certainly appreciate it. Here on the AM Report, Professor Barry Shroomp, who's a virologist, helping us understand what to make of, yet again, this unprecedented moment. Upwards of 14,000 new cases of COVID-19 picked up.